Hello ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls. This is Shin and you're watching Coffee Shin TV. Right? So finally I got new machine wow. from the HQ. So this is the Descent Espresso D1 Pro version 1.3, which is the newest one. I'm really excited to use the grip head controller. That's gonna make the Descent Espresso machine to the next level. So I may say there is nothing on the next level from the Zenith Express machine, but there is now because we have version 1.3, y'all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unbox my machine, show you how we pack the machine and what it looks like. So let's do this. <coughs> Here's my knife. I have to just take my invoice and things out. Yes. Oh yes, there you go. So we put the machine upside down. So what you're gonna do is take the four tire foams out like this and then flip it upside down and just lift up the box. Then there is another four tire foams hold the edges and take the plastic cover off. There you go. And just put it in here. That's it. A uh, new suitcase. I'm gonna open it up. Open it up. Open it up. Unzip it. You ready? I'm ready. So let's do this. Boom. So let's have a look. So here is the machine, the body, and this box includes the USB cable and like blind water filter kind of things. I'll just unpack it later. And look at this, look at this. Here is the very new grip head controller. Sealed with a plastic, so I'll just take it up gently. Oh yes, that's the stuff, baby. This is the Pro, so this is mirrored front panel. So I can see my face, and so I'm looking my face. And Steam One, pretty standard. And as this is the Dion Pro, so you can see the IMS screen like this and this wow this is soft and this doesn't get any like fingerprint on there it's a bit it's okay not the bothering and another thing is the water tank so the water tank is gonna go under the machine and here is the drip tray and new drip tray cover stainless steel so there is no stain and water filter and this is the handle for the machine because the machine is too light. So we put the handle on here and then hold it so the machine doesn't move when you like put the portal filter in or take it out. And here is a an Android tablet. So this is like Android version 8.1. So this is quite a fast, faster than the previous one. And this is the guide to put the stand in the middle of the tablet. And let's open this box. So in here, I've got the power code cable, 18 grams basket, and here is the USB cable version 3. Here is another box. What's in here is, here is the blind basket to clean up the grip head. And here is the silly stand. So this one I can stick on the back of the tablet. So this is the wax paper. So if I take this off, there is 3M tape on here so I can like stick it on the tablet. And this one is the magnet. So if you put it on here, it just holds it on here. I just stick the stilly stand on the tablet too easy. Just put a guy, put it in the middle, and then take the wax, wax paper off. What do you do? And put it in the middle. That's it. Perfect. I can put tablet like this. Can you see this? Right? Like rip the plastic off. And there is a gap on here. Can you see this? In the spring. So put one edge on the gap and hold it with your thumb and then push it. If it doesn't go in, then just hit it. That is it. Perfect. I can. I'm gonna put the machine on my table, just right next to the, my version 1.1 machine. So, let's do this. There you go. Water tank. Let's slide it. And there is a lever on the back, which is 
this one and this one is tightened by a rubber thing so lift it up and then push the water tank in and I lift it up and then I push the water tank all the way in all the way but it's really important okay and drip tray and drip tray cover so put drip tray on here and put the drip tray cover on here great and next one is the handle there is a screw on the handle so you can screw it in in here and per filter the USB cable the connector for the USB cable is on the grip pad so you can put it in like this there you go and then connect it on here that's it and finally the power code on the back of the machine there is a connector for the connector on here so put this connector in and then connect the code on any outlet or any electric source that you have at your home that's how you set this an special machine d1 pro or plus i want to turn the machine on for that i have to fill the water up in the water tank first so actually before putting the drip tray on there you have to fill the water up first so i'll take the drip tray out like this and then lift the lever up lever is right here and then drag the water tank out like this i've got my water here pour it in here probably this much and this is like 1.3 like liters i guess and then lift it up and push it in that's it and put the drip tray back on oh yes there you go and then i'm gonna turn the machine on so the switch is on the back of the machine and there is a switch on here so turn it on then there you go and then yellow light is filling up the circled led then i'm gonna turn the tablet on as well the switch is on here and then you can see the led light filling up the led this means it's preheating while i'm waiting for the preheating i'm gonna start the app here this is the first page that you can see when you turn the tablet on and there is a little icon shaped like this and this personal machine so tap here and you can start app like this and if you go to setting and app and there is a code for the espresso machine this one so it's already connected so okay then you can see it's preheating right now and it's a bit more than the middle so preheating has just done then the red led light is off and then it's ready to use on the version 1.3 machines the usb cable connector is on here right above the group head so the usb cable does not get stretched but just makes the like quite satisfying looking like shape like this on here you've got group head controller what it can do what group head controller can do that's the most important part this video is gonna be about the group head controller so from the version 1.3 machine this and this person machine is gonna have the group head controller okay so in the last video i showed you like how to turn the machine on and that is it so in this video, I'm gonna show you what group head controller can do. So let's do this. Ah! So firstly, I have to, I don't like to, but I have to compare with the version 1.1 machine, which doesn't have group head controller, sadly. But, 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 you're gonna like it when you hear it, which is you can put group head controller on the version 1.1 machine so we just released the group head controller upgrade kit so if you buy it then you can do it and if you like replace the kind of like gnome group head with the group head controller then that's gonna be your version 1.1 group head controller amazing right 
So let's do this. So the very first thing, the very first thing what group head controller can do is start the shot, stop the shot, start flush, stop the flush, start steam, stop the steam, start water dispense and stop water dispense. That's it. That sounds so simple and it actually makes things really simple and easy and fast. I'll show you. So as you can see, here is a Fortran 1.1 machine, so which doesn't have like group controller. So for doing every function like flush, espresso, steam, and water dispense, you have to use your tablet. You have to like tap on your tablet. So for doing the flush, you have to go to the flush on here. You need to tap the start. Then it'll start to flush. And then if you want to do espresso, you've got to tap the stop and then go to the espresso tap and start. And steam is the same. You have to tap the steam tap and tap the start. And water dispensing as well. You've got to go to water tap and then tap start. Something like this. But, 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 on the other hand, version 1.3 machine with the group pad controller, you don't need to tap the taps. So if you want to do flush, you can simply tap here. And if you want to do shot, you can just tap here. Then it directly go to the shot tab and immediately start to shot. Stop, in this case you have to stop because it has like real time control function is going on with the grip pad controller. So you have to stop first and stop is on here, the middle one this one this icon is stop if you want to do steam all you need to do is a step steam this one here so it just automatically goes to the steam tab and it starts steam like this how powerful is that that's it and finally the water dispense the same like the other things so just tap on here then it automatically goes to the water dispense tab and it start to give hot water automatically like this and the on pro you can see my face handsome looking a face that is the first one so just simply the group head controller can start and stop but it operates like immediately so it's much faster and second thing and this is really really interesting because it can do real-time control from now so Previously, what you only can do is not only though. The thing you only can do is just make profile and then do shot. And then the shot just follows the profile. That was it. But from version 1.3, you can do real-time control during the shot as well. So first one is the same. Just make profile and then do the shot. But in that case, if the shot goes like that, you don't want to. For example, if you are doing the pressure shot, you want it like two milliliter per second of flow rate to make the pressure. But if it goes like even six milliliter per second of flow rate, then you can drop down the pressure in real time to get two milliliter per second. Or you are doing the flow rate shot. So you set the flow rate at four milliliter per second and you want to get like, for example, eight, a bar of pressure but the shot comes out with like um 10 bar or like 11 bar then you can like slower the flurry to control the pressure i'll show you here's my coffee let's make a profile if i want to do a flat four milliliter per second shot so there's plus flow and everything disappear and four milliliter per second and one minute shot and temperature at like this just tap here and i want to get about like six five to six bar of the pressure at four milliliter per second so here comes the shots there is no pressure because this is a pre-infusion step and as you can see the pressure is a six bar how good i am how good i am <laughs> well there's nothing to control so I just finer the grinder dire. So I just started a shot, same like before, four milliliter per second, like flat Freud shot. And I want to get five to six bar, five to six bar. 
so there you go but the flow rate is at four bar and pressure will be start to rise yeah there we go and pressure goes up to like what limb bar that's too, too too high in that case i need to drop down the flow rate like this there you go oh it's too low then i can faster the flow rate then pressure it rises like this and stop here amazing right so as i showed you if you want to like rise the pressure or drop the pressure at like pressure profile or slower the flow rate or faster the flow rate at flow rate profile first thing is tapping <laughs> so the group head led is gonna show the real time flow rate and pressure so the green light is pressure and the blue light is the flow rate so the flow rate is at four milliliter per second the blue light is gonna be at four o'clock so in that case you can tap like three o'clock one time it changes the 0.1 value it goes to the 3.9 milliliter per second of flow rate so if you want to like change it to like three milliliter per second you need to tap like 10 times da, 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 da. or if you want to go to the like five milliliter per second you need to tap 10 times above then four o'clock so da, 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 da. that's it and pressure is the same if you do the like nine bar pressure shot and if you want to like lower the pressure during the shot just like tap like anywhere below then nine o'clock then it just like lower the pressure as you want to but tapping that much if you want to go like six milliliter per second to like two milliliter per second that's like 40 times of tapping that's like too much so another thing that you can do is holding your finger on the grip head controller at like flow rate shot you are doing the like for example four milliliter per second flow rate shot and during the shot you want to change it to like three milliliter per second for like whatever regions then you can do like 10 times of tap or you can hold your finger at three o'clock then it just immediately changes to the three milliliter per second i'll show you so there you go, same 4 milliliter per second shot. Come on, come on, come on, come on. So shot just started and it's at 4 milliliter per second and the pressure rises. Oh my god, pressure rises like too much. I want to have like 3 milliliter per second shot. Then just tap at 3 o'clock. Then it just drops down to the 3 o'clock. Oh, the pressure goes like too low. I want to have like 6 milliliter per second shot. Then just hold your finger at six meter per second and here we go and if you want to stop here then stop here and just one thing about the like holding your finger if you like lift your finger up then it goes to the profile immediately so for example if you see the graph right here at 4 milliliter per second shot, I just hold at 3 o'clock, so it changes to the 3 milliliter per second, and I immediately changes to the 6 milliliter per second shot by like holding at like 6 o'clock, and then I let it go and then stop it. So as I let my finger go, it immediately goes back to 4 milliliter per second, which was the profile. So this is for emulating lever machine. When you make a shot with like lever machine, you're gonna hold a lever and then pull it down and then coffee comes out like that. So for doing manually emulating lever machine, what you need to do is set a flow profile. So set the flow at 0.1 milliliter per second and then do the shot and then control the flow rate with your finger. Like doing this, do this. So it's much easier than this right i'll show you so here's the profile 0.1 milliliter per second shot i need the coffee i want tv i want tv i want tv so here comes the shot i set the flow rate as 0.1 milliliter per second so there is gonna be like really 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 little amount of water comes out from the machine and what i need to do is hold my finger at like four so it's like 
start to pull the lever and then here comes the pressure with coffee oh pressure goes up to like 11 bar so i want to drop down the pressure so like you pull the lever but not too hard not too hard and pressure is too low and maybe i just pull the lever like harder like this if you think like oh if that's enough for me then just let it go then it goes to the 0.1 milliliter per second of flow rate which is just nothing so it's like stopping the shot from the lever machine and if you like actually stop the shot from here then you can tap the that's it for today guys so i showed you like what good pet controller can do and how to use like real-time control welcome to the next level so i went to meet a decent espresso machine user so he lives quite far from me in a province though so i took a trade there we go to get the window oh yes and he just moved to a new house so i bought him a toilet paper hey man and then there you go you need some toilet paper <laughs> no this is possible or me present Oh, that was really pretty. That's nice. Yay! And there is his machine setup, like, quite neat, right? Especially the buffet. And he bought the version 1.3, the one XL actually, but he got the Pro first. And we drank a lot of coffee. A lot. And yeah, we had some food. Ryan cooked like steak and jalapeno popper, which is like quite an American thing. There we go. And there were some potatoes as well. And then that was delicious. It was T-Bone steak. It was amazing. And then his dog, one of his dogs, came to me and... <laughs> I haven't done the opening yet. <laughs> Do you know what opening is? How are you going to introduce me? Yeah, that kind of thing. <laughs> So, so, hi, I'm Ryan. No, that's not it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls. This is Shin. And I'm Ryan. And this is Coffee and TV. Bang. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is Ryan. He's a design and personal machine user. And he actually lives in Korea. And he's in like US Army. And say thank you for your service. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he actually a helicopter pilot. <laughs> Crazy. <Yeah. laughs> so how, how do you like? It's like pilot. Uh, has its ups and downs. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the down? Uh, <laughs> Why is there a downside? No, it's yeah. uh, it's good. I have no complaints. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Now I got a nice yeah, yeah, machine. Cool. Right. And copy it, well. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was uh, I received yeah. it and I was waiting on you, and you went to JG. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I ended up opening it. Uh, a mm -hmm. little early. Mm -hmm. The packaging was great. Mm -hmm. Suitcase is awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually really assuring mm -hmm. having the suitcase. Yeah, right, right, right. Uh, because move around. The padding in the suitcase was awesome. No worries that we're getting damaged on the way here. Mm -hmm. Opening it uh, looked great. Mm -hmm. I sent you the video. Of yeah, it. right. Six minutes video. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like watch the whole thing though. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was packaged great. Turning it on was easy. Oh yes. It was, it was nice having this smaller pro. Yeah. Because I had a small counter. Oh right, right, right. Even if you got the XL one though. Uh, the XL, I don't think it would have fit on that counter. I think it, what it's on yeah. now. It'll and the refill kit. The refill kit, I actually so I had the machine I don't know, a little over a month now. Mm -hmm. And I just set it up yesterday. Oh really? Yeah, yesterday. I didn't know it. I just moved. Mm, right. So I just got it on the on the buffet. I don't have the drip tray the drip tray done yet. So I, yeah. I'm unsure if I want to put holes through the top of yeah. the buffet. I mean, it's not needed, but it would be nice to never have to move the drip tray. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It'll make like everything easier. Yeah. Because whenever you flush, there will be like some water filled up the drip tray. So yeah. then. You have to like throw it away every time. Yeah. But if you have like drink it down there, then yeah. I could do that, but I'm unsure if I want to put the scale under or not. Yeah, that's the issue. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I use uh, some bigger cups that it won't fit with that scale under it. So 
I prefer smaller cups, uh, but sometimes you need the bigger ones. Yeah. What is it? I guess I started looking up espresso machines and then decided I wanted to get one. I started looking like everybody does at, say, like Breville. Yeah. Uh, and then knowing myself and looking at those machines for probably close to two months, I realized myself I was going to grow out of it very mm -hmm. fast oh, yeah, right, right. Uh, because I wanted to do more with the, with the coffee. Mm -hmm. And I started looking at other machines and, and then I found a Las Baseale, which was a plumbed in version with rotary pump, dual boiler, mm -hmm. Italian machine. And I tried to buy it off of eBay and the, the seller had put the wood panels on the side, yep. so it had walnut panels, which added weight to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the machine before weighed less than 70 pounds, and then after the walnut panels, it weighed more than 70 pounds. Ah, yeah. So mm -hmm. I was unable to get it shipped to me mm -hmm. Thank you from the much. United States, because <laughs> uh, it has to go through the USPS no, right. in order for me to receive it, mm -hmm. and my American address in Korea. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So that led me to decent because I was like, well, I literally just paid, you know, this amount for that machine. Yeah. And I was like, I could put another thousand dollars and get the decent. So at that, that point I started paying more attention and researching into the decent more mm -hmm. and uh, a bunch of YouTube videos and videos from decent. Uh, John made a bunch of videos, right. you made videos, mm -hmm. several people out there, owners making videos. So a bunch of videos out there, I researched them and I watched the machine for probably four months before I contacted DC. Yeah, right. So I got in contact with John over Facebook or something. I asked him if he, if they were able to ship 110s to South Korea uh, because a year or two I'll be returning back to the United States and I'll want a 110 model. So he was like, yeah. And then he put me in contact with you to get a demo. So at that point, put in contact with you, mm -hmm. went up to Seoul to uh, your office, mm -hmm. and you gave me an awesome experience with mm -hmm. the machine. Yeah, so right. yeah, I'm just waiting for the, you know, the 1.3 to come out. Yeah. So when I received this machine, I already knew how to get good coffee from it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of aspects with the machine that I'm kind of always learning with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, now I'm starting to dive deeper. Oh yes. With like yes, uh, yes. flow profiles and different temperatures and pressures mm -hmm. and so on. Nice. I think you explained everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not only one who uses the machine and your wife Abby is yeah. the machine as well. Do you know how does she think about it? Uh, I like a completely different style of coffee than yeah, my wife right. likes. So she likes lattes and more chocolatey yeah. style beans and I just want fruit forward mm -hmm. coffee. Yeah. Uh, which is a completely different style. She can do it very easily when it is already set up, yeah. but when she starts paying attention to the graphs and screens, and, mm -hmm. uh, she's to the point where she's like, the the basic you know, mm -hmm. 25 to 30 second in yeah, a yeah. certain certain weight, mm -hmm. uh, she's good with that. So oh, yeah, right. she can use it, but mm -hmm. it's also her not necessarily wanting to take the time to learn. Oh, okay. So yeah, she uses it just fine. If I'm not here, she will use it. Yeah. Uh, but she's usually happier with the coffee when I make it. Yeah, true. No, it's great. It's, uh, it's been a great experience so far. Mm -hmm. The most exciting for me isn't necessarily, I mean, using the machine's great, uh, but I think the combination of roasting myself yeah. and using that is your own fire. Yeah, that is, I don't know, it's amazing, mm -hmm. really, because I've, feel like I have really high quality beans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't care how much coffee I go through. <laughs> uh, I went through like 200 grams the other day trying to figure out yeah. the flow profile, uh, which I didn't really care about. But if I would have went to, you know, a shop and bought the coffee, mm -hmm. you know, it could be 20,000 won or 30,000 won, even more <laughs> expensive, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, or 20 or 30 dollars. I think the two come together pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. True. And I feel like it's hard to find the coffee that I want in shops. Yeah, if you like start roasting, you find that like the coffee that you like 
then it's really hard to find the coffee from any other shops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's really cheap to like buy as in green beans. Yeah. And it's really expensive to buy just like liquid form. <laughs> thank you for your like review. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Thank you very much. Let's go to buy some grinders. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna go buy grinders. Yes. <laughs> so I guess that's what we do. I will review on the grinder. Thank you for watching. Peace out. Bye. <laughs>